all right guys welcome back to the channel so we are picking up where we left off so we got our characters imported into the engine and then we got our character definition file created where it recognizes our skeleton our material and our skin to create our character which is what you see on the screen now he looks a little weird but that's okay because he's not going to go into a game that we're trying to sell <laughs> So let's get our animations at least visible so we can uh, append them to the character so we know what animations work with what skeleton or if you're going to use like one skeleton for all which is usually what I do for certain characters. I might have like three different three different skeletons in the game. Uh, one for like monsters because sometimes they have different appendages like tails and horns that might need to be animated and whatnot. And then I have a skeleton where all my NPCs work from. And then my character might have its own skeleton. Just depending on just depending on the animations that I want to do for the character. So uh, right now we have the skeletons tree uh, down because I was playing around with some things before I recorded it. But you should have your character definition file selected here that you created in the last video. And this will look something like this when you first open it for skeletons. So what we want to do. And to make sure that your skeleton is in the skeleton list, but we want to drop down on objects. And animations could come from anywhere. In my case, if you're using the animations from Mixamo, which will tie in with the skeleton that you created from Fuse or download it from the uh, the website where the ready-made characters were available, then um, you'll see here. that I have downloaded two animations and they are of these FBX file type. So in the last video, I didn't explain that. Um, Mixamo has different file types. They got rid of the uh, Unreal Engine 4 file type, but you can still use the FBX and then they have F FBX for Unity. So just use the basic FBX uh, file type and download it without skin and you can leave it at 30 frames per second and make sure it's in the uh, I forgot what the other option is but you can leave that one alone as well so make sure you download those copy them or you can cut them or whatever or transfer them to the same folder um, well not to the same folder but to the same area that you have your mesh in inside of the uh, samples project so if you see here this is where the mesh is we have our mesh and then we have our character definition file. Now, what we're gonna do is create another folder and we're gonna call it animations. And inside here, we're gonna copy those uh, two or four or five or 20,000 animations, depending on how many that you wanna use. And we're gonna put them in its own folder because we can filter out the folder to where it recognizes every animation into inside that folder. So make sure you create your own folder if you're gonna have multiple animations. So let's uh, minimize that, minimize that, and we want to click on the uh, CHR params for XO Gray. And if you can see here, we have animation set filter. Add one of those, and you can see it's going to have different uh, guidelines for the type of animations that will be read inside of this folder. So if we open up the folder, let's go to our folder or wherever you put your files at. I recommend you putting them in a separate folder so you can just kind of keep track of them, guys. So open up C Studio. Well, I'm opening up C Studios. Uh, we want to click on Animations and select Folder. Now, what, let me go ahead and save all. So as you can see now, on the left side, Animations we have uh, Copier or Capier. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, so I apologize for butchering it if I did. And then we have Running in Place. Um, if I click on that, you see him moving. Now, there's one thing I have a problem with animations in Amazon that I haven't figured out yet because am animation, as you guys know, isn't one of my strongest suits. Um, but it looks wobbly, like it's trying to do stay in place, but at the same time run off um, root motion, which looks weird. So let's do running in place. You see how it looks just looks <laughs> it looks weird like he doesn't like he's like it looks like he doesn't know what the ground is and I don't know how to fix that at this current moment but the point was to get animations into the system <laughs> so 
if I were to let me close the pedal. So I hope you guys understand this. So make sure you have your main player here, uh, your skeletons. Click on the params. Make sure you add your animation set filter. Click on the folder where all your animations are, and then they should pop up here uh, for your skeleton. But let me show you guys. If I close this, bring this open, and let's see where is my. So if I was to bring out my CDF, oh wow, well, okay. So you guys see him there. Look at him. Look at him. Look how nice he is. All right, and over here in the in the entity inspector, we have transform. We have skin mesh. What we're gonna do is add component. Now you wouldn't want to do this. I mean, you want to do this for simple things, but for complex animations, you want to use mannequin which we're going to jump into um, in a few days here. I just got to kind of get the hang of the program, actually get it to work in the first place. But we're going to go to simple animation here. And since you already added your skeleton to the skeleton list, you appended those animations to the skeleton. When you go to add element and under animation name, you should have those two already attached to it. So if I go to Capier, I'm sorry, I'm butchering that. Um, you should select that, and if I go to game, he should he should play. Look at that, guys! We got characters and animations into the game. Now it needs some refining, of course, but this is a big step because for a while you only need it you need a Maya or a Max to even achieve this. So now this is coming from just Fuse. Uh, so anything coming from Blender, uh, personally, I use Moto. And Blender, I have Maya, but I don't want to use it because it's not beneficial to the average indie developer. And as far as you guys go, it's not beneficial because a lot of you guys use Blender or maybe Moto Indie or something like that. That's more um, beneficial to your budget. So I don't use, I don't bring out tutorials for Maya because for one, there's buttloads on YouTube, and for two, it's not going to help you guys who are on a low or zero budget or just starting out and when to get started and can't afford Maya so yeah so we have animations guys we have characters so that's gonna be it for this three-part video hope this was beneficial to you guys hope this helped out a lot if it did do not forget to hit that like button uh, do not forget to hit the bell icon so you can guys can get all the videos uh, when you subscribe also, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. I'm going to have a little bit more content coming out for you guys for cameras and things of that nature. I'm working on a, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm working on a island type uh, gym where I can distribute it to you guys. You guys can play around with it. Uh, but I need to get this out first because I want to make sure a character is moving and uh, can walk around it so you guys can kind of see how things are done I guess the way I do it I, I guess I should say so um, look out for that uh, like I said leave comments for me below if you guys have any uh, let me know if you like it if it's if you don't like it if you hate it if you hate my guts that's fine too <laughs> but uh yeah I'm going to head out guys and get some more things done so uh, I guess I'll catch you guys next time and always remember guys to keep developing